Hi, uh, welcome to my Technation Talk. Uh, my name is Alexander Gatsagrias, and I will be talking how you can train machine learning agents to do fun and absurd things using Unity 3D. Um, I'm a software engineer at CGI in the Netherlands. Uh, I specialize in uh, 3D applications, uh, think about uh, 3D simulations, visual visualizations, uh, serious games, things like that. Um, I have uh, three big hobbies, so to say, bouldering, which I haven't done for a year because of a certain pandemic that's been ravaging us, um, uh, windsurfing, and uh, I really like to play games in my free time. Um, if there are other people that really like to play games in their free time, feel free to say it in the chat. Uh, I'll be present in the chat, so I'll be reading it. Uh, and it's good to know that there are some other like-minded people uh, on that uh, department. So, and it, that's going to also be reflected a bit in the in the talk that uh, games are a really uh, important part uh, of this. Uh, all right. So this talk, why did I want to give this talk? Um, so machine learning is big, right? I don't think anybody can disagree with that. Uh, machine learning has been uh, in our lives for quite some years now, and it's been pretty much integrated in any uh, any uh, a huge amount of uh, software. Uh, here, even on PowerPoint, if I uh, press uh, a subtitle button, uh, my speech will be recognized and it, uh, uh, subtitle, subtitles will be automatically uh, generated, which is done by some machine learning component uh, in the background, uh, which is pretty neat, uh, of course. Uh, but, you know, this is just one example, but it goes to self-driving cars, to chatbots, to well, image recognition, uh, you name it, facial recognition. It's all around us. Uh, so I decided as software engineer, it would be my best interest to actually learn something about it and how it works and uh, what you can do with it and what you can't do with it. Uh, but I really wanted to, do, to learn something, in a, to learn this in a, in a fun uh, and absurd way, building things that have no use whatsoever, to be honest. Um, so that's why I decided to use Unity, also a pro program which I'm quite proficient with, um, to, to, to use that to learn uh, about machine learning. Uh, and my goal with this talk is to pass down the knowledge of what I learned during, uh, during this journey. Um, and uh, hopefully you can take that with you and do uh, build absurd and fun things yourself using Unity uh, and machine learning, uh, the machine learning agents package. All right. So, uh, machine, uh, machine learning. Well, uh, we know it's big in the software world. We don't have to talk too much about that, but it's also pretty big in the game development world. Um, and it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, some areas where it's uh, being commonly used. Uh, first is uh, for NPC uh, AI, and NPC stands for non-player controlled uh, character. Um, um, it can be anything, right? Uh, combat. Uh, AI to uh, dialogue AI to uh, emotions of a uh, non NPC uh, to pretty much anything. Uh, 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 studios are using it for whatever uh, they find necessary in that department. Uh, another area where it's pretty popular is procedural content generation. Uh, uh, Minecraft is, for example, is a, such a procedural content generated game, uh, and game developers are looking at how they can use that to maybe create an uh, uh, infinite amount of monsters, uh, procedural monsters, and have the machine learning agents to uh, control those, those monsters without uh, with them feeling very natural, uh, or create full worlds uh, uh, using machine learning techniques. Uh, furthermore, this is a quite popular one, as we've been reaching the news a lot of times, is uh, player simulation or uh, trying um, creating machine learning agents that uh, can uh, simulate players' behavior. For example, uh, AlphaGo, uh, you probably read about that, uh, that the AI playing AlphaGo has uh, beaten all uh, professional uh, Go players, or chess uh, AIs, or uh, most, re most recently the Dota 2 uh, AIs, where a team of five uh, machine uh, learned um, AIs has beaten the pro teams in uh, Dota 2, a uh, massive uh, online uh, battle arena game. Um, and finally, game developers are looking how they can uh, automate their QA uh, pipelines uh, with machine learning, how they can automatically test, test their games uh, using machine learning agents. Can they just eject an agent into their environment and have it test their game, uh, thus saving them a lot of man hours and costs. So um, Unity, a uh, game engine uh, company, uh, saw the rise in interest in machine learning and said, okay, we really need to do something with this. And that is where the machine learning uh, agents package came in. 
Uh, first, for the people that do not know, Unity is a game development agent. Uh, it's a market leader. Um, you write code in C-sharp, C-sharp scripting. Um, and one of the biggest selling points is that you build once and you deploy anywhere. Uh, from Android to smart TVs to you name it. Uh, it can go anywhere. Um, so they created the so-called machine learning agents package. Uh, it was released in 2017. It's completely open source. If you Google machine learning package uh, Unity, uh, you'll go straight to the GitHub page. It's built on top of PyTorch. Uh, for, for the people that don't know, it's another uh, open source uh, Python-based um, uh, machine learning um, um, library. Uh, it supports uh, deep reinforcement learning algorithms and imitation learning algorithms, but more on that later. Uh, it contains a low-level Python API for the more uh, machine learning savvy people <laughs> under us, um, uh, which allows you to control the environment directly and a more um, an uh, accessible entry point for use uh, within the editor, which you can uh, call from the command line, uh, which is what we'll be going, uh, doing today mostly. It was released in 2017 and has been actively developed since, so it's not deprecated or dead or whatsoever. Uh, if you want to get started, you need a couple of things. First, you need to install Unity. Just grab 2019 or 0 0.4 or later from the uh, website. Uh, you need to install Python 3.6.1 or later. Just grab from the website again. Uh, you need to install the uh, Unity machine learning package, which can be installed from the package manager UI uh, in the Unity editor. Uh, one thing to know about this is it's still a preview package. So in the editor, you'll be needing, in your project settings, you'll be needing to enable uh, enable preview packages so you can uh, see the package and download it and just select it from the list and press install and there you have it. It's going to be inserted into your project. It's as simple as that. And finally, you need to install the Python packages, the machine learning Python packages, which you can do with the commands you see here. It's also pretty uh, uh, self-explanatory uh, straight to the point. Um, all right. Um, if, all that, if you've done all that correctly, all you need to do then is um, mlagents-learn-help and then you'll get all the commands available, thus showing you that you have successful, successfully installed the machine learning package. Uh, what you see is I work in the virtual environment, uh, Python virtual environment. I do that to separate the packages, uh, the dependencies, uh, and isolate them uh, for this project. Um, obviously, uh, it's not necessary, but it is quite handy uh, if you like the separation and you don't like to break other, other projects. Okay, so how does this work? Um, we have a learning environment, which is our Unity editor. Uh, so when you, you start Unity, that's your learning environment, based, uh, pretty much. Uh, outside of it, we have a Python trainer. The Python trainer contains all the machine learning uh, algori algorithms that enable uh, well uh, the training agents, um, which are implemented Python. And then we have a Python API, which wraps the Python trainer. Uh, and the Python API, uh, API can communicate with a learning environment through the communicator. So the, the Python API and the Python trainer live outside of Unity on their own server instance, uh, and the communicator lives within Unity and talks with the Python API and connects uh, both. Uh, if you zoom into the learning environment, uh, most of the times um, you'll have some agents in your environment uh, that need to learn something, that you want to teach something. Um, Agents are typically uh, actors that, uh, hand, uh, that handle uh, generating observations and performing actions uh, it receives. Um, and then uh, it assigns, uh, it gets a reward and passes that reward uh, down. Um, its agent is linked to a behavior. Um, uh, a behavior defines specific attributes of the agents, such as the number of actions it, the agent can take or how many observations it should be expecting uh, or it needs to generate. And it also defines the name of the of the behavior. Um, it, it, a behavior can seen as an uh, as a function that receives observations and rewards from the agent and returns the actions, uh, basically. Um, and behavior can be of uh, three types, have three input types. Uh, learning, which is then connected with the communicator. Uh, inference, which is basically then connected to an already trained uh, model, uh, which feeds it. Uh, or a heuristic, which is, and heuristic basically means that it's the behavior uh, input parameters are hard coded by you as a developer uh, and passed uh, passed onto it uh, for mostly debug purposes to check that your agents uh, are behaving correctly as you would want them to behave. 
Um, when it comes to training methods, we have uh, two training methods we can use, a reinforcement learning and imitation learning. Uh, reinforcement learning, uh, the agent does something correct, you give it something, a reward, um, or uh, you punish it if it does something wrong. Imitation learning is you pre-record your actions and the agent basically has to uh, imitate those actions. There are a lot of algorithms, but we'll, and I will not go through them all because uh, time is quite short. Uh, but the more, more reported are on the re reinforcement learning side, uh, PPO, Proximal Policy Optimization, uh, which is a very general purpose algorithm, and that's the one we'll be using mostly, and Soft Actor Critic, SAC, which is an algorithm uh, which is off policy, which means that it, it's working very well in uh, low uh, speed environments. This, uh, so environments that have a low um, academy step uh, frequency. Um, imitation learning, you can use behavior cloning, um, which tries to imitate the, uh, the recorded actions one-to-one, uh, -one, or uh, generative adversarial imitation learning, which is used in scarce environments where you don't have a lot of pre-recorded actions, where it tries to infer uh, between the actions, uh, pre-recorded actions, and guess for itself what it needs to do. Uh, for, for today, uh, we'll be focused on reinforcement learning only uh, using proximal policy optimization, PPO. Um, and that, again, because <laughs> we only have a half an hour and I can't go through everything uh, with that half an hour. But I promise you, that you, you can do some pretty neat stuff with this alone. All right, so to the crème de la crème, what we're here for is training our own agents, right? The, the, cool, the fun part, the cool part. Uh, and you can, it, can, it can be quite uh, challenging to have the agents do what you want. Uh, it, it takes a lot of trial and error. Uh, so first things first, you'll be needing to design your agents. Uh, agents have a certain loop. Uh, they make an observation. Based on that observation, they will make a decision. Uh, based on the decision, they will take some actions. And based on the actions, they will get some rewards. Um, the observations uh, in our case is going to be of three things, uh, of vector things, uh, vector uh, input. Uh, so it's going to be positions, rotations, and float numbers, uh, mostly. Uh, the decisions, uh, we can change the decision period. So, uh, and if we, we allow the agent to take actions between decision uh, periods, uh, for all our agents for today, we'll set this to five. So decision, the decision period is going to be five, meaning that every five academy steps will be making a decision. And we will allow the agent to take actions between uh, the decisions. Uh, actions can be of two types, uh, continuous actions or discrete actions. Continuous actions are uh, uh, basically our numbers. You, you get a certain stream of numbers fed, and that number can be anything between minus one and one. Um, a float number and discrete actions are int integer numbers, uh, which can be, be uh, minus one, zero, or one, uh, basically. Um, and based on those actions, you get a reward, or we give the agent a reward, and that reward can be minus one, zero, or one. And that's basically so that's kind of what you need to know about the agent loop, and then you can start building your own agents. So um, let's start with something si simple. We have a pirate, and we all know. Pirates love treasure. Uh, pirates love to seek treasure. So we have a pirate uh, pirate in our uh, environment. This is our environment in within the Unity editor. Now, and this is our pirate. pirate. Um, and what we want to do is him move to the treasure chest in front of him. Uh, but we don't want to make it too easy for him. Uh, so here, uh, on the right, you see uh, the behavior uh, par uh, parameter, uh, parameters uh, and the agent uh, component script. Um, so we give it a behavior name of move to chest. It can be anything. Uh, vector observation uh, space size has to be six. So we basically tell this behavior, you'll get six uh, generate six observations and you will be getting two actions uh, in return. Uh, then we want the behavior type to be default. For now, uh, that means that it's be ready to train. It's going to be trained, and the max step is going to be five thousand. Meaning that after five thousand academy steps, it will stop. It will reset itself to to the start, and that is to make sure that it doesn't just stand still in the middle. Uh, so those are basically the parameters uh, and the things you need to tweak uh, in the editor. Now, if we look at the implementation of this uh, pirate, um, this is uh, what the code looks like. Pretty, pretty short and sweet, I would say. Um, important thing, uh, if you start creating your own agent, inherit from the agent class you get from the machine learnings package. 
um, and then you have certain uh, amount of uh, methods you want to overwrite. The, the first being uh, on action re received, where uh, when you, you get the actions generated and you want to do something with that. Here we said we want two actions, uh, the, the, uh, and we'll be using one to move on the x-axis, uh, right and left, and one to move on the z-axis, forward and backwards. Uh, and then uh, once we receive the actions, we move the uh, pirate a certain amount based on the move speed we have predefined and the number we get back. So the so with these numbers, the pirate can go right, right, left, forward, and backwards. Um, then uh, another method we want to override is the collective observations method, which we and then we get a sensor uh, which we can add observations to. And here we add the local position of the pirate itself and the position of the chest he wants to move at. So at all times it knows where he is and where the chest is. Um, we have six uh, vector uh, observations defined, and that is because uh, a position is defined in a so-called vector three. So it, it it is a set of three numbers. So three times two is six. Um, and then uh, the uh, last important one is uh, on episode begin. Uh, what do we want to do every time an episode ends? Uh, a training episode. Uh, for example, when you reach your goal or when you go out of bounds or your max steps are, is reached, uh, then we want to uh, uh, set the transform the position of the pirate somewhere, somewhere random and the position of the chest somewhere random. So we randomize a little bit uh, our environment to make sure the pirate learns to actually look and search for the treasure instead of going from left to right towards uh, the treasure. Uh, then we have uh, an optional one that you can overwrite, which is uh, heuristic, where you can map your own input to the actions, basically, when you just want to debug your agent, as I said before. And here I'm mapping it to the WASD keys to be moving around. Uh, finally, we have here a trigger enter, which is a method where once we touch something else, something ha happens. If that something else is the goal, the treasure, uh, we give the uh, uh, the agent a reward of one, and we end uh, the episode. Uh, if something else is a wall, that means we're stepping out of bounds of our environment. We give it a penalty of one or a reward of minus one, and then when we end the episode again. And that is basically all there is to it. And using this, we can already actually train our uh, pirate uh, to go and get that booty. So. Uh, if you open um, a command line window and, and navigate to your project, uh, like I have here, you can do mlagents-learn and then you can pass in a config file. Um, that config file looks like this. So important here, you need to name the behavior the same as you have uh, defined in your editor, as you see here, move to chest. Um, and then the most important thing is here, we say that we want to be using PPO as uh, the backing algorithm for this machine learning agent. Uh, and that is basically all there is to it. The rest is uh, uh, the normal stuff, uh, the, the default uh, config. So using this, uh, we can uh, uh, set also a ren ID. So let's call it pirate one. Then we press enter. We'll wait a little bit until the our uh, the Python API starts, and then it says you can start running by pressing the play button in the Unity editor. Uh, so we will do just that. We'll press play in then our Unity editor. And then it's going to start connecting to the uh, Python um, uh, trainer. And there it is. It's gonna, it starts training. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> our pirate is walking very fast. Uh, that is because the, uh, the Python API is speeding up our environment so that we, it can uh, uh, teach the agents quicker. It, uh, and more steps uh, per second, uh, basically. Um, as you can see, it's already kind of getting the idea of, of what it does, it needs to do, except for this time, which is going the wrong, uh, the complete the wrong way. Uh, you can even speed it up, uh, speed this up even more by uh, duplicating your environment and copying it. Uh, this is what I, I did here. So now I can just go here and then I, I tell it I want you to resume. Uh, the previous run. Uh, so it's going to start up um, and then I can press play again. 
and here it's going to tell me okay i'm resuming from step 3335 uh, and as you can see it's going to basically be uh, training all these agents simultaneously thus uh, speeding up training times uh, significantly uh, which is pretty neat all right um so let's stop this uh when we can all right, so now this is stopped and the unity is, uh, the training here is stopped. And now that uh, I have a pre-trained model, of course, because training these things takes a little bit of time. Um, uh, you can see it here. So all I need to do is put this in inference only. Um, and these are all my trained brains, uh, so to say, my trained models, uh, which are uh, stored in a so-called .o and an X file, which stands for Open Neural Network Exchange File, which is an uh, industry standard. Uh, and then basically all I need to do is here press play and then you'll see that the time scale, the speed of the whole environment is going to be normal and that our pirate will successfully and without fail always navigate towards the treasure chest and grab it uh, for that uh, sweet, sweet uh, gold. There we go. Uh, so that's pretty neat, right? And I would say it's uh, also pretty, uh, pretty simple and uh, to to get to get started. All right. So that was the pirate, uh, and that was moving on two axes. Uh, but what if we want to rotate something, right? Um, we all know that cool people don't look at explosions. Uh, it is a fundamental part of our society, and very. Uh, uh, so I thought, why not train a machine learning agent? to not look at explosions. Uh, how hard can that be, right? Um, well, uh, it turns out it isn't that hard at all. It's easy, quite easily achievable. Um, so uh, no need to save this. Uh, so I will not show again the, the training steps uh, because it takes a little bit too long uh, and we still have some cool stuff uh, I want to show you. Uh, but as you can see, th th this is our environment. We, are he we have here uh, a text showing us if uh, the person, the agent is being cool or uncool. Uh, cool meaning I'm not looking at explosions. Uncool meaning I am looking at explosions. Uh, how does the this agent uh, only needs one action, um, uh, by the way, uh, and, ten, uh, and takes 10 vector uh, observations uh, uh, as input. All right, so let's look at the, our cool agent. So when we receive the action, all we do is uh, rotate on our I axis. So we rotate around uh, uh, based on that um, uh, uh, action, on that number. And then uh, we add an observation of our position, the position of the uh, character, the, the rotation of the character, which is a quaternion, which holds four floats, um, and another observation of where the barrel is. Uh, and finally, uh, every five seconds we'll be spawning a barrel and the agent needs to make sure that after those five seconds, it is not looking at that barrel. And we do that by calculating the dot product. The dot product means if, we, um, if, the, if the agent was directly looking at the barrel, it would be one. If it was looking away, it would be minus one. Uh, and now that uh, we just invert that number. So when we look uh, away, it's going to be one. And we look directly to the number, it's going to be minus one. Um, and then uh, I trained it, uh, and uh, with inference uh, mode, it looks uh, pretty much like this. There we go. And as you can see, our cool agent walks away from all the barrels that spawn uh, because explosions are such more, uh, much more magnificent when the one causing them is walking away. Uh, am I right? There we go. Yeah, so that was pretty neat, uh, I would say. Um, and again, uh, pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. Uh, then we have, uh, w then the question, right, okay, th this is pretty okay, but what if I want to train multiple agents within the one environment doing more things? Okay, what can I make to, 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 to make that to do to make that happen well uh i'm a kind of a harry potter fan if there are more harry potter fans throw it in the chat uh glad to hear from you uh so what if i recreated uh, quidditch and then basically the seeker and snitch um uh part of quidditch so we will have two seekers trying to grab uh, a snitch um so we will go into our quidditch scene 
over here. So we have our two seekers here, uh, Gryffindor and Slytherin. Uh, and our snitch is uh, up uh, here. Um, there it is. So as you can see, this is also the, the same environment I used to train the models I've already pre-trained. As you can see, uh, the, I have multiple uh, now hidden Quidditch environments you can use to train your, um, I use to train the, these uh, behaviors, uh, these agents. Uh, so how does this work? Um, well, the, now the, uh, all, the, all the snitch and the wizards all take uh, three uh, actions uh, and they have multiple uh, uh, vector observation uh, they uh, need to be doing. Um, so let's start with the uh, seeker agents. Uh, so the actions are basically the same as with the pirate, but then we'll also having uh, one on the eye axis to have them move up and down. Uh, so now they can fly in a three-dimensional space. Uh, and flying is very important for wizards playing Quidditch on a magic broom. Uh, and every time, every step they move closer to the snitch, we will give them a small reward, basically telling them, okay, you need to be moving closer to the snitch. Uh, the observations are um, the position uh, of, uh, of, the, of the magicians itself, the position of the snitch, uh, and the distance uh, of the magician to the snitch, of the seeker to the snitch. Uh, on the episode begin, we will, won't be doing much because they always start at the same spot. Um, and basically, if they move outside, if they try to move outside of the environment, we punish them and we uh, end the episode. Um, otherwise, if they collide with anything else, we give them a small punishment. And if they catch the snitch, uh they will be uh adding uh one uh, to the reward and ending the episode and then the snitch uh, base but the snitch on the other hand will lose it will get punished uh if it gets caught as you can see it is so we're now in the snitch agent uh, which works fairly similar similar its goal is to stay alive as long as possible so it gets uh, a reward every uh, step it moves further away than um, the other agents, uh, the, the seeker agents. Um, uh, and then uh, if it manages to reach its max step, which is 10,000, uh, it gets a reward of one. So his goal is actually to stay alive as long as possible. Okay, so uh, again, inference only is uh, on. Yes, snitch. Uh, where are we at? Uh, yes, then we can press play here. And then it's gonna load it up and here you can see our beautiful uh, Gryffindor uh, uh, wizard, uh, Slytherin wizard fly behind the snitch. Uh, I gave him a little trailer in there so we can see where the snitch is and how they're going uh, and try to catch it. And there we see that Gryffindor caught the first one and then they will go again and try again. Uh, as you can see, the snitch taught itself that somehow the most efficient way to uh, escape its, uh, the people behind it is to go to the right, to fly to the right, and it will do that all the time. Uh, and I think you can probably change that by adding a little bit of randomization in the in the start or where the seeker starts and where the snitch starts so it learns that it doesn't necessarily have to go right uh, all the time at the start uh, so yeah uh, again pretty neat shows that you can use the same environment for multiple different agents okay then I wanted to see okay uh, this is cool and all but can I do something with physics um, now when I think of physics um, or cool uh, Physic moments. Uh, I kind of think of Matrix, very cool movie. If you haven't seen the movie, if those people still exist, go see the movie. Uh, at the end of the movie, there is uh, a scene where Neo, our protagonist, dodges the bullets very graciously and very cool in a cool man manner. So I was like, I will try to uh, replicate that. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to. <laughs> um, uh, and I'll show you, because uh, according to our uh, agent, uh, it wasn't the more, most optimal way of doing things. Uh, so this is our agent. It's a physics-based ragdoll, so to say. Uh, and we'll be shooting a bullet um, here uh, in this square. And basically the agent, it gets 
a reward if it dodges the bullet and it gets punished if it touches the floor with anything except of uh, except his uh, feet or hands. And if it gets hit by the bullet, it's going to be propelled against the wall, so it's going to touch something with his something else. Uh, it it uh, when it comes to uh, observations, we have uh, 182 observations we uh, we are uh, taking account, and that is because every single joint in the body of this agent we will be taking into account uh, what the obs what the rotation and the what the position is, so that we know what is the state of the whole body while we are moving the body, and we move the body by generating. Uh, float numbers and applying a force to the joints. So basically we apply a certain force to uh, the, uh, the elbow and then we close the arms and stuff like that. And then you'll see that he, uh, the agent learned that falling to the left uh, and uh, with your arm down is by far the best way to dodge uh, the bullets that are being shot uh, towards it. Um, which is again pre pretty neat if you ask me. And it probably kind of makes sense that this is uh, the most optimal way to dodge bullets is shot uh, to you uh, in a certain way. Again, with a little bit of randomization, you can probably make it uh, uh, more random what the agent does. And finally, uh, I'll go through this quickly because uh, we're almost out of time. Uh, the headbanger, I'm a little bit of a metal head myself. Uh, I love myself some metal. So I thought, okay, well, how ca can we do something else than just use... Um, uh, positions, uh, vector observations uh, to do things, and this uh, example actually looks at the uh, music data and uses the music data to generate uh, actions. Uh, so it takes the music in, and then you'll see uh, once the music is slow, like now when it's not metal enough. Uh, they had been slow. It's still a good crowd. They will always give something to the performer. Um, so, you see, they, now it's going a little bit of slow. And once the music picks up, they're going to be, he be headbanging like a real crowd in a real mosh pit, ready to rock out. Exactly like this. Which is, looks, just looks hilarious if you, if you ask me. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, um, th that was it. Uh, thank you very much for attending this talk. Everything I showed you is on GitHub. Just go there and clone the project and do with it whatever you want. Um, if in the end uh, it shows that, uh, if in the end you make something like, I don't know, uh, something cool, let me know. If you end up making something like Skynet or the Terminator with this, please do not mention my name and keep me of it. Uh, thank you very much again for watching and uh, I'm open for questions.